Let's go to Octavia in Los Angeles. What's up, Octavia? How are you? I am rocking on to the break of dawn. How are you? I cannot complain. Yes, you can. You'd be like well. the rest of everybody. But I'm happy that you're not. <laughs> so good. So what's up? Well, I just want to get a little bit of advice. Um, life just kind of went crazy. And, um, you know, I just want to see where you'll be able to help me at and see if maybe you can give me some cool advice on moving forward out of this crazy situation. All right, let's do it. I'm down with some cool advice. All right. So um, back, I would say, in May, um, I had a landlord who um, wanted to wrongfully evict me, stating that someone else lived in my unit who did it. And um, so we went through this whole um, eviction process where I had to combat the eviction. And in the midst of there, my stuff was locked into the unit. Um, so on June 23rd, some kids got into the unit playing and burnt my house down. And, Wait, uh, what? Me and my, yeah. Okay, hold on. Me and my, hold on. So you're, did, were you behind on rent? No. So he stated that someone lived into the unit that didn't live in the unit. Um, oh, so, so you had, was, did you have somebody over there a lot, like a friend or something, and he wanted to charge that person rent? No, that's the thing. Um, I had to go through this whole thing to prove to him that no one lived there, and I did. And um, he stated that he was going to go and clear the eviction with the courts or however, and he never did. So all of a sudden, I get this letter that states that I have to leave out by within the next three days. And from my knowledge, everything was cleared between the gentleman and I. And um, long story short, he lied. And so when we went to court, he lied in court. And um, yeah, that's how come it went up to where I had to actually dispute it. Did you win the, dis it. did you win the dispute? So in the midst of trying to do the dispute is when the house burned down. So there's nothing to dispute anymore, you know? Who burned it? Well, there still is actually, but who burned it down? Your, your nephews? No, it was actually some people that lived in the complex. Um, and it was, it's court, it's documented and everything. The fire marshals came, the boy went to jail and everything was set in stone in that aspect, um, of knowing who did it. Okay. But the thing is, um, it's been very hard for me to find a lawyer since then that would take this case for, um, I was advised that it's for negligence because, um, on paper, the, the young gentleman who burnt the house down did state that all they did was slide the window open. So that means when the landlord and the constable went to quote unquote evict me, um, they were supposed to lock up the unit and they didn't cause the little kids said we slid the window open and that's how we got into the unit. So the boy got in trouble, but I still need help with, um, you know, the situation with the landlord for negligence. Mm. And on top of that, um, Neg negligence in my experience is a very high legal standard to meet. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Um, you've got to, I say that like, it's got to be very clear. Let me put it that way. Like there's a hole yeah. in the sidewalk and you step in it and break your leg. Like it's got to be very, very clear. Yeah. Um, and that, that, like what you're describing to me, just on his face, I'm, I'm no attorney and so I can't give you legal advice. That sounds like a standard that will be nearly impossible to meet. Did you have renter's insurance? So at the time I didn't. Okay. Um, I, I just learned that um, I had canceled my renter's insurance when the eviction process started. Oh, um, I was advised that I have a really amazing case because everything's already documented. Um, the court marshals, they've already given me an estimate of how much uh, my stuff was in the house. Um, the boy already was deemed guilty. The, his lawyer stated that if I go after him, he does have to pay. Um, so I have, um, the chief of the fire department stuff. I have all the paperwork from the, um, police department. Um, so how, how can I the, help you? So, um, going through all of that obviously made me and my children homeless. And I have a 10 year old and a six year old. Um, and after June 23rd, when the house burned down, October, 20th, my daughter's dad passed away. Oh my gosh. So that put me in a really hard financial bind. Um, I don't know any, like no one in my family has ever financially made it anywhere. Um, 
Okay, so hold on. Or, if you have a place that you're staying and it burns down, like if you're in a hotel or if you're in an apartment, part of your lease states that they have to find an alternative place for you to live. They did not do that. I know, but what I'm saying is that you need to go to them and say, hey, per my lease, um, you've got to find a, you've got to provide me another place. And I've had people whose um, apartments catch on fire and they just live in a hotel for a while and the apartment complex has to pay that. Um, or if something, they've got to provide you a place to be. I was not aware of that. Um, me and my kids move pretty much to a homeless shelter. Okay. I would circle and, back. Um, and here's the other thing. Do you have the money to pay rent? I mean, um, are, are I'm you working? working now. Okay. I am working now, um, okay. I, but it's part-time. Okay. So I have saved up money, and I, I was just trying to go through this program to try to— um, the road try to get me into like a place or something. Sure. And I have been going through this program pretty much since my place burnt down. Okay. And I know that, um, you know, I've just been trying to look into different things. You know, I'm definitely into owning my own business. Obviously I can't really do that in this situation yeah, yeah, of not yeah. having my own place. What you, you know? need, what you need right now more than anything else is <sighs> like you've been through a lot. Yeah. And my guess is, how, how old are your little ones? Um, 10 and 6. Okay. Mine are 12 and 6, okay? And um, is dad around at all or no? Um, he passed. Okay. Oh, that's right. You told Just me that. Just recently. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. So, so I'm like literally by myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> I left that state because it all happened in Las Vegas. That's kind of what brought me here um, but you, to go you, through this program. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's take a second. Like the worst of the worst of the worst has happened to you. And you're running and running and running. Okay. So I need you to hear me say this really clearly. When traumatic things happen, our body, our brains roll back into a very primitive state, which is one of survival, one of fighting or fleeing or hiding. Okay. And when our brain is stressed like that, we make very immediate decisions to try to get to the next second. And that's often what traps people in cycles that are very hard to get out of, okay? And so what I want you to do for just a second, can you take a really deep breath for me, as deep as you can and just hold it? Hold it, hold on, blow it out. That wasn't even deep enough. Do you vape? No. <laughs> Good. You can you can breathe deeper than that then. Give it a shot. De breathe deep. Hold it. Let it out. And I want you to drop your shoulders. I want you to pull them down. Okay? What was what was um your child's father's name? Charles. Was he your husband? Just long term no, long term partner? Yes. Okay. So Charles is gone. And your home is gone. And I know you're running around trying to super glue and duct tape and take some string and some fishing line and try to hold your kid's life together and your life together. But the path forward is sitting down for a second and just putting your face in your hands. Okay. You've got to give your body a chance to settle into this. Is what I'm saying ringing true? Yes. I'm so sorry this happened to you. What just happened right in a row to you should not happen to anybody. Not to mention the stress. They were already trying to take your house away until some knucklehead burned it down. And at least you had to ride or die until he passed. And now you're in a mess. Okay. Yeah. Sprinting and running and thinking about starting a new business that is down the road right now. Um, you may have heard me say this on this show by your hand, not by your hand, but in your lap. You didn't cause this stuff, but here it is. And so the dreams and the excitement and the things that just got pushed off because the world just hit you in the mouth. Okay. And I hate, hate in my guts that it did. 
So why did why of the one of the most expensive places to live in the United States is Los Angeles, California? Why'd you pick there? Um, it's so funny that it really is, but at the same time, um, this is the one state that helps you. You know, Las Vegas didn't have that. I was pretty much sleeping in my car, and um, coming here. Although I'm in this program, that's you know, it's like a homeless shelter, like pretty much women with children in these huge houses mm-hmm. and um they're helping me with Las Vegas I had nothing yeah. um you know the Red Cross didn't want to help me um no like I had nothing at least out here it is the most expensive but I know that everyone's afraid of scared world but you don't have to be there like there really are programs that'll give you housing awesome. they're gonna help you you look for a place they'll help you um you know um different stuff like that. And then coming out here, I ended up getting a really good job. And But it, but it's part-time, right? Yeah. All right. So here's your moving forward goal. <sighs> like my heart's broken for you. Your moving forward goal here is putting on a calendar, like maybe 24 months, maybe 18 months. And you are going to take this hurt and this anger, which should be real. Someone burnt your house down. Charles died, man. You should be pissed off and yeah. heartbroken and sad. All those things. And those two beautiful little kids, you know what I mean? Who are hurting right. also. 24 months of maniacal, intense, I'm going to work two jobs and four jobs and seven jobs. Or I may have to, I know there's a cool program and I know it's Los Angeles and I know there's like some walk right in for some setup. But if you got a family member in Kansas who will just let you hang on for 24 months, or if you got a family member in Rhode Island or Oregon and you can drum up some nickels and quarters, and I know gas is basically liquid gold these days, but here's the thing. I just, um, this morning was in a meeting with my team and a woman owed $267,000 all on her own. And she said, never again. And she worked that way, never again. And most people don't work that way, never again, for two reasons. Number one, there's not a path forward. Like, I don't know what that looks like even. And two, the world has told you that you're powerless. You're not worth being in a relationship with. And I, I need you to hear me say, Octavia, you are strong. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. You didn't say that with much confidence. You were much more confident about how great the service, the, the, the services are in California. Do you believe you are strong? <laughs> yes, I, I do. Okay. Nobody in your family lineage has handled money well, have they? No. No. You will be the one who changes your family tree. Are you in? Yes, of course. Okay. There's a great quote by Terry Reel, who's a, a therapist who I love. And he said, family dysfunction and family trauma rolls downhill, burns through families like a forest fire till one person turns to stare it down and says no more. And that person gets scars and burned and does not have all the shiny stuff, but their kids do. Right? Right. So I'm going to set you up. Here's what I'm going to give you. Um, You know, I work here at Ramsey Solutions, so I'm going to give you a year subscription for free to Ramsey Plus. What that is is that is how to do money 101. Starting from the ground up. It's the same plan I use, me and my family, that most of everyone who works here does. It's the same plan that took Dave from getting, um, losing everything to becoming, he's got hundreds of million dollars. I can't count his net worth. Okay. But it all starts square one. Okay. I'm going to give you that. I'm also going to send you a book called Total Money Makeover that's going to teach you about how to take control of your money. Okay. I'm also going to send you my buddy Ken's book, 
Cold paycheck to purpose. Did he already send that to you? No. Okay, I'm going to send you that. Here's what that job is. I mean, that book is. It's about how to get, start from square one, from zero, to go get work that matters to you and that you matter to the work because both of those are important, okay? And I'm going to send you a copy of my book. And here's what my book's about. It just came out. It's number one bestseller. My book is, so you've had a life of trauma and the world kept hitting you and they kept hitting you. And when you thought you couldn't take no more, then they took Charles. And my book walks you through. And then the back half of that book is, so what do I do now? How do I stand back up on my two feet? How do I get a community around me? How do I look at my two little kids and say, we're in this together, ride or die. And I'm going to be the mama that none of the people in my lineage have been before. Okay. I'm going to send you all of that. But here's my prom. You have to promise me. Okay. Yes. A with the Ramsey, with the, um, Ramsey plus, you have to watch all of the videos. You promise? There's like nine of them. I That's it. Promise? I promise. Will you watch them with your 10 year old? Yes. Watch them with your six year old too. We're changing family tree stuff here, right? Yes. Will you commit to finding a place to live? If you have to be in services for the next, I'll, I'll give you six months in Los Angeles, okay? Okay. The way you just described the services there is how people get trapped. Because it is good. There are some great, like the, the, your house just burned down. Here's a place to come stay. But that can't be a two-year, five-year, 10-year plan for you, okay? Right. In Los Angeles, I could not afford to live in Los Angeles and I make a lot of money. I don't make a lot of money. I do well, okay? I can't okay. move there. You hear what I'm saying? So at some point, yeah. you're gonna have to say, all right, what's my path out of here? And Paycheck to Purpose will help you figure that out, Okay. Do you have somebody you can share life with right now? Do you have a friend, a, a relative, somebody that can walk alongside you? Um, not really, but... Okay, I want you to... F whether you go down to a local church, whether you find somebody and scrounge up some nickels and buy coffee, um, whether you get with one of the other moms in that home that you're in, you have to make a connection with another human. You cannot do this by yourself, okay? Okay. You promise you'll do that? I promise. You know why? Because you're worth being in a relationship with and you're worth being loved and you're worth having somebody by your side. Fair? Yes, that's fair. Okay, so is today this all changes? Yes, that's, that's what I need. Say yes. it, today this all changes. Today this all changes. This is what I'm talking about. And it might not all change. You may go back to the same shelter and you may go have the same place with your kids and your kids are getting out of school and you're trying to figure out day camp for summer and stuff like that. But in your head and in your, in your guts, today is the day this thing all changes. Right? Right. So proud of you, Octavia. Today's the day, man. Read the books. Watch the lessons. Find somebody to do life with. It's going to be hard sledding for a few years. Hard sledding. And you're worth every single step of the way.